I've been talking, I've been multiplying matrices already, but certainly time for me to discuss the rules for matrix multiplication. And the interesting part is the many ways you can do it, and they all give the same answer. So it's, and they're all important. So matrix multiplication and then uh, come inverses. So we're, uh, we, we mentioned the inverse of a matrix, but there's, that's a big deal. Lots to do about inverses and how to find them. Okay, so I'll begin with how to multiply two matrices. First way. Okay, so suppose I have a matrix A multiplying a matrix B and giving me a result, well, I could call it C, A times B. Okay. Uh, so, let, let me just review the rule for, for this entry. That's the entry in row I and column J. So that's the IJ entry. Right there is CIJ. We always write the row number and then the column number. So I might, I might maybe I take it C34, just to make it specific. So instead of IJ, let me use numbers, C34. So where does that come from, the 3-4 entry? It comes from row 3 here, row 3, and column 4, as you know, column 4. And can I just write down, or can we write down the formula for it? C34 is, if we look at the whole row and the whole, whole column, the quick way for me to say it is row 3 of A. I could use a dot for dot product. I won't often use that, actually. Dot column 4 of B. And, but this gives us a chance to just, like, use a little matrix notation. What are the entries? What's this first entry in row 3? The first, the first, that number that's sitting right there is A, so it's got two indices, and what are they? 3, 1. So there's an A, 3, 1 there. Now what's the first guy at the top of column 4? So what, what's sitting up there? B, 1, 4, right. So that this dot product starts with a, 3, 1, times B, 1, 4. And then what's the next? So this is like a, I'm accumulating this sum. Then comes the next guy, A, 3, 2, second column, times B, 2, 4, second row. So it's B, A, 3, 2, B, 2, 4, and so on. Just practice with indices. Oh, let, let me even practice with uh, a summation formula. So this is, I, I, most of the course I use whole vectors. I very seldom uh, get down to the details of these particular entries, but here we better do it. So I'm, it's some kind of a sum, right, of things in row three, column K, shall I say? times things in row K, column 4. You see that that's, what's, that's what we're seeing here? This is K is 1, here K is 2, on along, so up. So the sum goes all the way along the row and down the column, say 1 to N. So that's what the, A, the C34 entry looks like, a sum of A, 3K, B, K4. Just takes a little practice to do that. Okay. And, uh, oh, well, maybe I should say, when are we allowed to multiply these matrices? What are the shapes of these things? The shapes are, uh, if we allow them to be not necessarily square matrices. If they're square, they've got to be the same size. If they're rectangular, they're not the same size. If they're rectangular, this might be, well, I always think of A as M by N. 
m rows, n columns. So that sum goes to n. Now what's the point, how many rows does b have to have? n. n. The number of rows in b, the number of guys that we meet coming down, has to match the number of ones across. So b will have to be n by something. Whatever. p. So the, the number of columns here has to match the number of rows there, and then what's the result? What's the shape of the result? What's the shape of C, the output? Well, it's got these same M rows, or it's got M rows, and how many columns? P. M by P. Okay. So there are M times P little numbers in there, entries, and each one uh, looks like that. Okay. So that's the standard rule. That's the way people think of multiplying matrices. Um, I do it too. But that's, that's, I, I want to talk about other ways to look at that same calculation, uh, looking at whole columns and whole rows. Okay. So can I do A, B, C again? A, B equaling C again, but now tell me, tell me about, uh, yeah, let me, I'll put it up here. So here goes A again times B producing C. And again, this is N by N, this is N by P, and this is M by P. Okay, now I want to look at whole columns. I, I want to look at the columns of, in fact, here's the second way to multiply matrices. Because I'm going to build on what I know already. How do I multiply a matrix by a column? How do I, I, I know how to multiply this matrix by that column. Shall I call that column one? That tells me column one of the answer. The matrix times the first column is that first column. Because none of this stuff enters that part of the answer. The matrix times the second column is the second column of the answer. Do you, you see what I'm saying? That I could think of multiplying a matrix by a vector, which I already knew how to do, and I can think of the vector, I can think of just P columns sitting side by side, just like resting next to each other. And I multiply A times each one of those, and I get the P columns of the answer. Do you see, this is, this is quite nice. To be able to think, okay, matrix multiplication works so that I can just think of having several columns, multiplying by A, and getting the columns of the answer. So, like, here's column one. Shall I call that, here's a, shall I call that column one? And what's going in there is A times column one. Okay, uh, so that's the picture a column at a time. So what does that tell me? What does that tell me about these columns? These columns of C are combinations, because we've seen that before, of columns of A. Every one of these comes from A times this. And A times a vector is a combination of the columns of A. And, right, and it makes sense, because the columns of A have length M, and the columns of C have length M. And every column of C is, a, is some combination of the columns of A, and it's